Hey class, uh, I want to take some time to talk a little bit about chapter one. Uh, chapter one being from our textbook, The Ethics, Crime, and Criminal Justice. If you haven't gone out to get that book, I encourage you to do so. Uh, there's going to be a lot of reading in this semester, and you absolutely need the book to be successful in this class. Uh, so go to the bookstore, get that book if you haven't already. Uh, it's really going to serve you well. Uh, secondly, before we get too deep into chapter one, I want to remind everybody how necessary it is for you to complete the enrollment verification quiz, as well as a student acknowledgement form. Uh, knock those two things out as soon as you can. I'd really hate to see somebody get dropped from the class because they, they didn't do those two things. They're, uh, they're very simple. Uh, it just takes a, a minute or two to knock those two things out, and then you'll be good to go for the, for the rest of the class. Uh, I want to tell you a, uh, a story about something that happened to me when I was early in my career uh, with LAPD. Before I joined LAPD, I went to, I started school in Kansas. That's where I started my undergraduate studies. And uh, you know, real small town, real uh, quiet, low crime. I, I wasn't a victim of any crime while I was there. I didn't really know what it was like to be a victim of crime and I wasn't exposed to a lot of crime. Uh, Fast forward to joining the LAPD and becoming a, a big city policeman. One of, the, that, one of the things that I realized early on was how much of a comparison those two experiences are as night and day going from Kansas to Los Angeles and experiencing uh, the high crime rate there. Uh, one night, my partner and I, we had a call of a, a suspect breaking into cars, walking down the, the, the street, breaking into parked cars. So we went and we found them found the suspect, uh, tried to take them into custody, uh, but the fight was on. Uh, they did not want to go to jail. My partner and I ended up rolling around on the sidewalk with the suspect uh, until at some point during uh, our fight with, with them, the suspect decided they were going to take a bite out of my leg. Uh, so they took a little chunk uh, of meat out of my, my calf. Uh, eventually, we got the suspect into custody. The suspect went to jail, and I ended up going to the doctor and then going home. Uh, kind of considered it all in a day's work when I was that young. Uh, just, you know, it, it wasn't a, a pleasant experience, but it wasn't the end of the world. Uh, just, just went about my business. And, but I realized at that point, you know, I was a victim of a crime. And so my perspective changed a little bit. Uh, a couple days later, I got a phone call and I found out that that suspect was HIV positive. Well, now things got real. Uh, a lot of thoughts going through my mind, trying to figure out what, what's going to happen. How's my life going to change? What, what if I end up becoming positive? You know, did, was, was the suspect able to transmit uh, HIV to me? Who, who knows? Uh, fortunately, as the, as the story unfolds, um, I wasn't infected and, and my life went on just fine. But it was definitely a, an eye-opening experience. And uh, I, I was angry at the situation. Like, I kind of had that indignant how dare you do this to me? Now I really felt like a victim of a crime uh, as opposed to you know, merely enforcing the law. Uh, that kind of brings me to chapter one. And uh, there's a philosopher in the 1700s that chapter one talks about, Jeremy Bentham. Uh, imagine that, that time frame, 1700s, that's you know, about the time that our country is being founded. Jeremy Bentham was a philosopher in criminal justice and came up with a lot of theories on uh, how the, the world of criminal justice should work what justice is, how uh, suspects and defendants should be treated, how victims should be treated. Uh, one of the bigger theories that Jen excuse me, Jennifer, <laughs> Jeremy Bentham came up with uh, was the theory of rational choice. So you may see that later on uh, as we discuss criminal justice theories. Rational choice is uh, the easiest way to break that down is, is a cost benefit analysis. If you've ever talked about cost benefit in economics or even in life as you make decisions, every decision has a cost and a benefit. So uh, as Bentham discussed rational choice, he would apply it to offenders. So if you, you know, if an offender is making a decision on whether or not to rob a liquor store, well, they're gonna make a cost benefit decision. Is the benefit of the money that I receive from robbing this liquor store, does that outweigh the cost of whatever happens if I get caught, the cost of prison, the cost of, of maybe getting shot by the store owner or maybe getting shot by the police. There's always a cost 
and a benefit. And you have to weigh those out. And that's what rational choice is. Uh, rational choice can also be applied to police officers uh, and, the, and their discretionary decisions. Uh, given the changes in some of the culture, the defunding of the police, the calls for uh, additional scrutiny on police officers, uh, the, the skyrocketing rates of police complaints. Uh, you may see some, some officers making a decision when they're wanting to pull somebody over for a traffic violation. Is the benefit of pulling this person over for the, the traffic violation, the benefit of, of reducing the risk of traffic accidents uh, and making the streets safer, is that benefit worth the risk of an additional complaint in their personnel package? So when you think of rational choice, it doesn't always apply to offenders. It can apply to police officers too. Uh, and that's only a decision that the offender can make or the police officer, whoever's, whoever's applying that, that rational choice, only they can make that decision. Uh, from the outside in, we don't know how that's going to play out. Uh, so one of the things that, that Bentham said was that rational choice is pain versus pleasure. Uh, people will always make the decision that helps them seek pleasure and avoid pain, avoid pain, excuse me. Uh, and, that, and that's how you're going to conduct that cost benefit analysis. Another thing that, that Jeremy Bentham said that is that all punishment is evil. That's, that was his belief and, and, and you'll see that on chapter five in our textbook. Uh, he believed that inflicting, inflicting pain is evil. So how does that comport with our current criminal justice system? Do we inflict punishment on folks? Absolutely, you know, prison is punishment. Uh, fines are punishment. Uh, but Bentham said, in his opinion, in his theory, and the way he looked at the world, that governments and societies should avoid inflicting punishment or pain on, on offenders. How do we do that? Like, how do you have a society? Think about that. How would, how would you have a society where you could avoid inflicting uh, pain on offenders? Where you could avoid sending them to prison, things like that. Is there a way? Well, there is. There is a way. There's another theory called restorative justice where the government, the prosecution, the, the end result of the uh, participation in criminal justice systems is to restore the victim because of the loss they incurred from their victimhood. Uh, take for instance, if somebody stole $100 from you, would you rather the person that stole that $100 be thrown in prison? Or would you rather get your $100 back? What would you rather have? I think a lot of folks would want rather have that hundred dollars back, and that's what restorative justice is. It's getting the the offender and the victim together, and and finding a way for the offender to make the victim whole. This doesn't always work. There's a lot of crimes where the the victim can't be made whole. If you were going to apply restorative justice to murder, rape, child molestation, things like that. How, how is a victim's family going to be made whole from the offender in any of these situations? It's difficult. You know, none of these theories are perfect. None of these theories uh, apply to every situation, but they're things to remember. Uh, as we move on to this week and you conduct your discussion boards, you know, discuss. I want you to discuss how, how all punishment is evil applies to crime. What are your thoughts on it? What did Jeremy Bentham mean by that? Uh, when you complete your discussion boards, as I said in the introduction, I want you to, to cite your sources. If you do cite this video, if you cite anything that I said, make sure you look up how to cite uh, properly via APA on uh, how to cite videos, YouTube videos. But, uh, and same thing, I want you to use your book or even some outside sources if you want to, to make some citations. But make sure you do cite your sources. It's, it's very important and I'll be looking for that. Uh, as we go on, make sure you keep up to date with the announcements that I make, they're very key, and uh, there's going to be a lot of good information there. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week, and I look forward to reading your posts.